Hi all, I have another remarkable game to show you today. Stockfish 8 against Leela 61007, the James Bond edition. <laughs> so we have the Vienna game being tested. E4, E5, Knight C3, Knight C6, G3. So what can ID 61007 come up with here? We see Bishop C5 is the first move. This seems very logical. Uh, the bishop looks very aggressive here. Sometimes uh, knight f6 to g4 can be played if, if white's uh, not careful. We have bishop g2 keeping an eye on, on g4 for the moment. d6, knight ge2. And actually, already uh, quite an innovative move. This has been seen before in a fairly high level uh, FIDO rated game. The move is f5, very aggressive early on, trying to loosen white's control on the center. We have e takes f5. This might not be the critical test. Uh, from analysis I've done, it seems as though d4 might be the way to go with the idea here of, of using this as a temporary pawn sack for knight d5. And now it gets awkward, uh, knight f6, because of bishop g5. This bishop can't really help the pin. So say f takes, and if we, <laughs> this is getting a bit fancy, but uh, if white castles, so a double pawn sack in the center, this seems to be quite tricky for black. For example, knight e5, b4, bishop takes e4. Uh, white is looking forward to this bishop g5 here. So white actually might be slightly better off uh, eventually. It's a very, very interesting position to analyze. If instead of knight e5, knight f6, bishop g5, then this should be at least fine for white. There's enough compensation, it seems. Uh, black's pawns are pretty fragmented here. White has that nice knight on d5. Black's extra pawn is, is doubled. And white can play like this to hold the e2 pressure. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting exploration positions there. But uh, e takes f5 was played in this game, not d4. So e takes f5, and we have bishop takes f5. White castles, knight f6, knight a4. And here is another very interesting decision, queen d7. Okay, this supports the battery. It also means bishop takes c6. White can potentially recapture with the queen, not horrendous pawns. Accepting the possibility of double pawns here is interesting. If uh, bishop b6 instead, this is actually, it seems as though this should be okay for black as well. This this scenario here should be fine for black. Uh, so anyway, queen d7, we have d3. If knight takes c5 immediately, this might be helping black here a little bit. Say black castles queenside with bishop h3. It looks like actually quite an interesting position from the black point of view. So d3 for the moment, bishop h3, bishop g5. This bishop's taken out, king takes, and now castling queenside. So yes, Leela has played super aggressively, aiming to have an opposite side castling scenario with a semi-open f file, not minding structural damage on the queen side. These double pawns could help clamp the d4 square. We have a3, a6, and if this, this bishop can be preserved, that would be an added bonus and luxury. But white does not want to permit that luxury. White now takes on c5. Uh, if c3, for example, bishop drops back, and black here has got a nice target on f2 with that bishop, this should be okay for black. Even a small advantage for black. So knight takes c5 here, snapping off that bishop. D takes. Okay, knight c3, h6, the bishop drops back, knight d4, and with the king on g2, it means queen c6 is a bit nicer with check sometimes. We have f3. Okay, if bishop takes d4 instead, c takes, this position should be quite pleasant for black here. Black's actually got a nice uh, central wedge and potential space gains later black's doing very well here it seems so uh f3 we have queen c6 knight e4 
Rook H F eight, Rook C one, Knight D five. The bishop drops back. B six, C four. This does give, of course, a backward pawn here by playing C four. But Black's position looks rather pleasant. If this isn't played, what is actually White doing? Maybe Black can increase the build up on the F file with moves like G five, and maybe consider doubling on the F pawn. So C four, Knight F six. Bishop takes d4. Here, if b4, as an example, what's going on? Knight takes this position with rook takes and knight e6 supports rook f8. And yeah, it seems white's on the defensive here a bit. If we have this scenario, uh, it looks as though, for example, with g4, uh, there's actually dangers on the knight squares. This is just a fantasy variation. I noticed you might think, well, isn't it giving up h6? This is a fantasy variation, but queen a4 here is an absolutely brilliant move getting to the white king. So, for example, like this, check knight d4 gets to the white king, for example, like that, winning the queen, or if c5, knight f3 check, and the checks get to the white king with checkmate. So there's some dangers on the light squares actually after this bishop, uh, Fianchetto bishop is taken off. There are some latent dangers in these variations. So anyway, bishop takes d4, rook takes. We have knight f2, g5, and it looks as though black's in a really pleasant position here with this f file pressure and the backward pawn. White does seem to be positionally crushed basically. King g1, but converting this. Concretely is another thing. Knight d7, knight e4, knight f6, knight f2. So a bit of playing around there. King b7, rook e1, rook f5, rook e3, knight f8, knight f2, rook d8. High level shuffling again. But the knight's now going to e6. Okay, b4. The rooks double. This seems extremely logical play. It seems beautiful actually, black's position. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the pawn chains are like. These like uh, triangles like this uh, sometimes but here okay it's a bind on d4 it's a very very nice bind on d4 very nice looking pressure on the f file we have b takes knight takes h3 if knight takes c5 check queen takes this position is just going to be much better for black yeah there's a nasty pin there's rook f3 happening on queen and so that's just <laughs> end of game really so um h3 not improving black's position with that uh, knight e6 rook c2 h5 so trying to get the f4 square this is really really uh juicy positional play knight d4 g4 volunteering that f4 permanent weakness hg hg the rook goes to f7 we have here queen f1 trying to stay solid queen g6 queen g2 Rook f4. This is just really nice entrenchment on the dark squares. a4, a5. Is this pawn a potential liability? Well, white's trying to break through to black's king a little bit. Rook f1, rook h8. Rook b1, so c5 looks dangerous. King goes out of the way. c5 anyway. Rook f7. Knight c3, so knight b5 looks as though that's a concern. The rook's double. Knight b5, knight takes. Critical moment here. White takes on b5 with the rook. If white takes with the pawn, can you see what black does? This is really quite instructive if this position happened. What does black play here using the h file, you think? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play here with black? I believe there's a key move in this variation. Rook h3. With the idea of traveling with queen h7, not quite an Anakine's gun, but does get that invasiveness factor. So queen h7 threatens check and rook h2. So for example like this, just pinning the queen. So this would be winning if, if black's given too much time to set up the treble battery, basically. So critical position, rook takes b5, keeping the pressure. And it means here queen c6 is needed. If rook h3 here, this comes too late. This this plan is too late. It's too slow here. After rook takes queen h7, for example, like this, there's rook takes a5 check, believe it or not. And the black king does get torn, torn to shreds after check. If takes queen b5 is mate, and the, kick, the king's getting kicked around like a football here until mated. 
So yes, change of plan slightly from the H file. Queen C6 to the defense. C takes, C takes, Rook B takes E5. If Rook E takes E5 instead, then check and, and then Rook H2 pins the Queen with no, no hassle there. So Rook B takes E5. Queen takes A4. So we have two connected passed pawns. If only Black can get to an end game without getting mated. Um, Queen C1 check was also perhaps a reasonable move here, but why not just take off this pawn if you can get away with it? Check King A7. Rook takes Rook takes F4. So there's the big, you know, threats like Queen A8 check unleashed. Check, check, and yeah, taking off that queen. G takes. So Black has now got the dream of the two connected past pawns in this end game and goes behind the pawn the Tarish rule stopping the opponent using the Tarish rule uh, getting behind the past pawn so the past pawns ready to be flung forward with the other one and these two connected past pawns are really strong of course and here actually it was adjudicated for a win for black it's absolutely winning here the pawns are going to press through okay the king could herd the pawn. It's it's very very easy to convert this. In fact, even if white gave up, if black gave up the rook for that pawn, eventually the king could just herd the two connected past pawns. So it's it's absolutely winning here. Uh, so yeah, uh, Leela with black played really in an entertaining and instructive way. The early f5 castling on opposite sides, not minding the double pawns there with that bishop. Uh, not being tucked away, but taken on c5, where it stood. But the end games later, uh, with this h file, not not the f file. It seems the h file was potentially lethal. If Black was left to its own devices, there'll be an infiltration on the h file. So White ended up weakening a key pawn, which which meant the end games were all really good for Black. Uh, with the two connected past pawns, as, as this shows. So a really really exciting game there, played with the Black pieces against. Stockfish 8. Of course, the latest Stockfishes are much, much, much stronger. So, but uh, this was Leela 61007. The graph seemed quite good each day. If you check LC0 website, the improvement graph is, is showing great promise at the moment. So, I'm hoping to check out the latest networks as, as they evolve. Hope you enjoyed this one. And check out the Vienna game course, Kings Crusher TV slash Vienna, if you want to learn to play uh, the Vienna. Uh, it's a very, very interesting weapon with the white pieces. I hope this game doesn't put you off. It shows actually you have to be prepared for the aggressive early F5 though. But there, there, are, there are ways and means as, as some of the, the analysis has showed, I hope. Uh, so you don't have to be uh, in despair with the early F5. Aggressive play from black in this game. Super aggressive indeed. Okay. Thanks very much.